Do finance apps even work? Every day, you're likely getting advertisement after advertisement telling you about the next big app that's going to save you money, make your life easier, or make you a bunch of money. But they can't all do that, right? This video is going to tell you the truth about whether finance apps work, what are the best finance apps to get using right now, and what are the finance apps that can make you some serious money. If that sounds good, make sure to like this video so you can spread this information to more people. Please also subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when new videos come out every Friday. They'll help you live a life you love through personal finance and self-improvement. The first finance app that everyone needs is the mobile app for your bank. I use two, Bank of America and Ally Bank. You might be thinking, well, that's obvious. But according to a survey conducted by Harlan Clark, about 52% of Americans don't use a mobile banking app at all. Only about a third use these apps with regularity. Mobile banking apps allow you to check your account balances, transfer money between these accounts and to other people, pay your bills, receive notifications for potential alerts of fraudulent activity, and many other benefits, all from the convenience of your smartphone. They also let you deal with mobile deposit. And you might be thinking, well, who deals with checks anymore? And I can tell you, as someone who does freelance and some contracting work, I pretty much get paid exclusively only in checks. Even 15 to 25% of young respondents in the survey we talked about earlier don't use mobile deposit because they just don't know how it works. In most cases, the app is just gonna walk you through it. Mobile deposit will save you time. And since time is money, it's also going to save you money. Plus, your funds should clear faster. Mobile banking apps are well worth it and they definitely work. There's another obvious category category of apps that you should have, and that's financial transaction apps. Think of Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, Zelle, and all of the other various apps that are seemingly popping up every week. These apps, depending on the one we're talking about, allow you to quickly send money to friends or strangers with simply just an email, phone number, or QR code. The convenience of these apps is their key feature, and likely the reason you have at least a couple of them. There's two issues with these apps. First, there's a lot of them. Now, having multiple apps on the market should incentivize these companies to compete, thus resulting in better features and better products for consumers, such as PayPal's recent introduction of crypto. However, let's think about what these apps do. They let you exchange money quickly peer-to-peer, -peer, but only if you have the same app. Because there's a lot of apps out there, you might not always have the same one as the person you're trying to transfer money to. See, this has probably happened to you. Yeah, I can Venmo you. Oh, I don't have Venmo. Do you have Cash App? Nope. And now you need to go get cash or download another app, which just defeats the purpose of the convenience. These apps operate on what are called network effects. This is the idea that a technology or a platform in this case grows in value and provides additional benefits to existing users as more users join. The most famous example is social media. With financial transaction apps, the more users there are, the more people there are for you to easily transfer your money to. Now, the other issue is security. BuzzFeed found President Joe Biden's Venmo transaction history a while back, and apparently it wasn't even that hard. Venmo has addressed the issue and is removing its public feed. Those security issues like this are something you should keep in mind. Generally, these apps are going to be worth it for quickly transferring money. Although which one or ones you use is going to depend on if you want to use any of their additional benefits and which apps your friends use. If you have multiple financial transaction apps, please make sure that you're not just leaving a bunch of money sitting in one that you don't use very often. Speaking of money that's sitting around not doing nothing, let's talk about crypto and hodling. First up, we have crypto exchange apps. These are apps that allow you to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrencies. The most popular is arguably Coinbase, although it also has some of the highest fees. One great thing about Coinbase though is that once you have a verified account, you can qualify for Coinbase Earn opportunities. For simply watching really short videos and answering really simple questions, you'll be rewarded with a couple dollars worth of crypto. I've likely earned about $60 or even more through Coinbase Earn. What you do with these coins will be up to you, but selling them, swapping them for a different token, or transferring them to another platform is going to hit you with big fees in most circumstances because Coinbase. Another example is Gemini, and this is one that I've used. It took a long time to verify my ID, but otherwise I haven't had any issues with the app. Crypto exchange apps are going to be worth Worth it if you're interested in dabbling in cryptocurrency. However, investing low amounts of money to get started with the popular platforms for beginners is likely going to hit you with hefty amounts of fees. Another interesting feature of both Coinbase and Gemini is that they allow you to earn rewards off of holding certain crypto assets. This takes us to another category of finance apps, crypto lending platforms. I've talked about these a lot in the past and you can check out a good video about them in the description below. The big three are BlockFi, Celsius, and Nexo. Personally, I've used Celsius and Nexo and Celsius is by far my favorite. And this is because Celsius offers the best interest rates on both the most popular coins on the market and stable coins. While the others have their own benefits, like BlockFi's access to the Bitcoin Rewards credit card or Nexo's daily compounding interest, I prefer the higher interest rates on Celsius and its unlimited withdrawals. Essentially, crypto lending platforms allow you to get value out of some of the crypto assets you might just have laying around. Getting your coins into your platform of choice is going to depend on both which crypto we're talking about and where it's coming from. Thankfully, there should be plenty of guides 
out there online for your specific use case. Now, I only have stable coins in Celsius right now, but I will be investing in other crypto assets eventually. The other main feature of these apps is the lending component. You can quickly get a loan by letting these platforms hold some of your crypto assets as collateral. I have no experience with this component, though you can get pretty low interest rates so long as you let them hold a lot of crypto as collateral. Using crypto lending platforms is going to be well worth it if you're interested in earning some passive income and returns on your crypto investments. And because crypto is seen as an investment, let's talk about some other more traditional investment apps. First up is Robinhood, and this is the one that you're most likely to have. This is also the one that I used to flip penny stocks throughout college and to pump and dump doge. Robinhood earned a lot of user adoption for being one of, if not the first app to offer free trading. Plus, users were able to invest just a little amount of money into different assets. Robinhood has faced a fair amount of criticism due to its handling of the GameStop and the AMC sagas, and for pretty good reason. If you're new to investing, I recommend you watch another video in the description below. Then, I recommend you use the trading app of a traditional brokerage firm that has low or no fee trading. Popular options include Fidelity, Charles Schwab, and Vanguard. This is because you can create tax advantage accounts within these brokerage firm apps. We're going to focus on the Roth IRA, which allows you to contribute up to 6,000 post-tax dollars every year into the account, and this money is going to grow tax-free so long as you don't touch the investment gains until the age of 59 and a half. You want to max out your Roth IRA before you get started investing in alternative platforms like Robinhood. That way, you won't have to face capital gains taxes, which are a tax on your investment profits. Speaking of alternative investing platforms, we can also talk about Webull and Public. From what I can tell, Webull is basically just Robinhood with more advanced analytics tools and access to IRA options. So I haven't used Webull, so I can't confirm that. I also haven't used Public, but I'm very interested in this platform due to its differentiation strategy. It combines investing with social media components. So that way, investors like you and I can come together to talk about our investments, our strategies, and grow our knowledge together. If you'd like to see me do an app on Public or any other app discussed in this video, please let me know with a comment down below. Now let's say you don't have a lot to invest or you want to get started with very little. If you go by the advertisements, then Acorn sounds perfect for you. Of course, I have my own history with Acorns that you can learn about in the description below. Suffice it to say, I'm likely never getting a sponsorship opportunity from Acorns. If you're like me and either don't spend a lot of money or don't want to put a lot of money into Acorns in order to get started, then the truth is Acorns is simply probably going to be a waste of your money. The app does work for certain kinds of people. However, the math indicates that it's really just a waste of time and money for most use cases. There's similar apps out there too. One is called Digit, which I haven't used. It's very similar to Acorns, but it also has the same roundup features, but it'll put money into your savings. Additionally, Bank of America offers a Save the Change app, which does the same thing, but the roundups are done through purchases from your Bank of America debit card. This is actually another feature kind of borrowed from Acorns. Though people who have seen my last personal finance video, which is also linked below, will know that in most cases, saving your money rather than investing it is going to be a waste because you're going to lose value over time. While these save or invest a little by rounding up apps can work in select use cases, it's really just not going to be worth it in most instances. Viewers of that last video might also want to hear about some budgeting apps, which is our next category, and boy, are there a lot of those on the market. I use Mint, which is also one of the most popular apps out there. It automatically sets up a budget for you based on your spending history that it can automatically figure out based on transactions in the accounts you've linked to Mint. You're then able to adjust these budget categories as necessary. Mint also tracks your credit score and displays your net worth over time. The only issue that I have is that this net worth feature can get kind of wonky when you're dealing with money that you transfer between your own linked accounts. In my case, transferring funds into Fidelity from my bank and then investing it gives me these up and down spikes of a couple hundred dollars every week, which makes the graph look pretty off. These next apps I haven't used, but I'll make sure to tell you about their differentiating factors. That way you can look into them if you're interested. Personal Capital focuses much more heavily on the net worth components. YNAB or You Need a Budget is a popular budgeting app that uses the envelope method, which essentially just means putting your money into different spending categories. Simplify by Quicken lets you look at your spending from different angles, which essentially just means they link all of your accounts in one place like Mint. Empower is another popular tool that goes after beginners or those new to creating budgets. Honeydew and Zeta Money Manager are built to deal with personal finances for couples. Capital does what it calls a payday divvy in order to split your money into different spending categories. This is basically the envelope method that we just mentioned, but the app automatically transfers money into those different categories for you. Budgeting apps really work so long as you understand basic budgeting concepts and you have a little bit of self-control. I highly recommend getting started and using Mint, although you can always check out these various other options if you're interested. Two more popular finance apps I'd like to mention are Chime, which allows you to get paid early through direct deposit, and then Splitwise, which is a tool for splitting costs. Both of these seem unnecessary, especially given the speed that money transfers nowadays, even through mobile deposit, and the fact that you can just easily divide a given payment between people by using the counter 
calculator app that's already on your phone. Now like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Please click the video on screen to watch another that you're going to enjoy. And then please add some music, some personal finance apps, or whatever else it is that you love to your day. Add some, add some